Today we're going to talk about some dial calipers. So this morning I went to the flea market. I haven't been in a couple months and I wanted to go and take a walk around and I scored a couple tools. So we got some Sterrett dial calipers and also got a Mitsutoya test indicator. And this is what the guy was asking at $100.75. And I offered him $100 for both pieces and he took it. So I got two pretty nice tools. I'll show you this. I'm just sharing this since we're talking about it. This uh, Mitsutoya test indicator, and it is a tense. And it's like brand new. Very nice indicator right there. So we pretty much got that one for $50. And then here's the other thing, is a Sterrett number 120A 6 inch dial caliper. These are the ones that are American made, very good quality dial caliper right here. Now the reason of this video is because when I, when I bought these this morning, the needle was not clocked properly at, at 12 o'clock like they usually are. It was more over here towards the, the 80 on the dial. And I'll, I'll flash a picture up there when I bought them so you can see what I'm talking about. So since then, I have already gone into these and fixed them so that they're working correctly. I've cleaned them up just a little bit, and I've done a little bit of honing on them. And we got them working just like they're supposed to be. So a very good deal for $50 for a used caliper. And what is unique about these Sterrett 120s is you got four screws here that you can remove and take this piece off and that allows you to easily reclock this now this is the only caliper that i'm aware of that you can do that to so i'll show you a couple more for comparison here so here is my other steric dial calipers that i've showed before that i bought i bought these a while back for my dad when we were still down at the other shop these are the the number one two zero two these are the ones that i consider the global you know the import ones the ones that they import from their china facility they're a good caliper but you see they don't have the four screws on this top plate here where you can remove that all right and then one more for comparison these are some that i picked up at a pawn shop a couple months back very very nice calipers these are the brown and sharp the ones made over in Switzerland and these brown and sharps are just always so smooth they're even smoother than the Sterrett's all right but again see they don't have the screws on this front this top plate there that you can remove that but there's other ways to fix these other ones there's another trick to it and that's what I thought I was going to show you today but instead I did it the other route which is actually taking taking this apart so since it's already fixed we're going to go in reverse here and i'm going to show you what i did to fix these okay so what you're going to need is a is a small flat screwdriver i got my little st uh, set of sterrets here that that i bought for doing this kind of stuff you don't have to have sterrets you can have any kind of screwdriver you want but this is what i used so we're going to remove those four screws and let's see if we can tighten up the shot here to you can see it a little bit better got all four screws loose and you can pick up on this maybe I didn't get the screw all the way out all right there we go pick up on that and bring it back just a little bit all right so we got this this bar on the end that's holding that in so you got to Pick that up, 
and then slide it out. Okay. So there's your gear on the back and that's what's going to move your dial. All right. Go ahead and knock the screws out before I lose them all. So when you get it out, go ahead and take the time to uh, try to clean it real good. I took a, one of my little paper towels and just wiped the inside of that out really good. And you can take that rack there and very with very gentle air even like one of those little cans of air just very lightly blow that rack out right there that'll help <clears throat> knock some of that stuff loose that's usually what causes your needle to jump is you'll get a chip you'll get a chip in there and it'll cause it to jump unless you drop it sometimes that'll cause it too which is that's what i was kind of worried was that it was maybe dropped up here you can see your your shims that create your friction along the slide and then your your top clamp that locks it in all right so just clean that up real good whenever you get it apart and then what we'll do is go ahead and bring this all the way back closed all right and on this piece right here you want to clock it back to zero or 12 o'clock or wherever you want it at and then we're going to line this back up so you got to stick it in this end right there get it get it going in there go all right dropped it back down in there into the rack I'm going to try to get these little tiny screws started you see how small they are Okay, that's the first one. So let me go ahead and get the get the other four in there. You'll see that needle moving around just a little bit as you as you get that plate centered up. I'm not over tightening them. I just just bring it down till it's snug. There we go. So just remove that top plate, clock, clock the needle on zero, and then you just got to line it back up, drop it back down in there. And I, I just run the bottom jaw all the way up to that it's, you know, on zero and then drop it in. And it might take you a couple tries to, to get it lined up, but that's an easy way to do it right there. So another thing that I did is on the inside of these jaws it had a slight amount of surface rust in there it was actually a pretty good bit that you can you can see where I've done a little bit of honing in there and that was probably because these things were stored for a while completely closed up and it got some you know condensation on them and the rust started forming so what I did is I took this India stone and I just very lightly hold it closed and I just go in there like this and I just hone it just to get the surface rust off of them. And that'll clean the inside of your jaws out. So there is one way that you can fix your stare at 120s. A very easy way to clock these things back to 
back to the, the 12 o'clock zero position like they're supposed to be. So if you see these things at a you know, flea market, pawn shop, whatever, you know, and you can get these things for a good buy, I, I think $50 is a, is a really good uh, used price for these things. And if you see them, you know, the needles off, just remember these easily are fixed, you know, so try to get them for a really good deal and bring them home and take these things apart, clean them and line it back up, put it back together. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that. And just one way that you can uh, fix these calipers right there. And if I get another chance on a, on another set of calipers like this, there's another way that you can go in there and, and reclock this using a shim. So I'd like to show that in another video though. We're not going to do it on this one. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one.